Hey folks, today we're going to have a look at Chamba Montero, which is a micro hydro scheme in Peru. This is perfect for question six in paper two, so right at the end when we're talking about resource management and energy in a low income country. So let's get started. So if you want to begin by just drawing some hills, don't get too hung up on what they look like, just get some hills in place and then kind of one that crosses those two like that. Okay, so you've got your hills in. Let's get our title in as well. Chamba Mon Terra. So it's the name of the village, okay? And it's in Peru, which is in South America. All right. And it's what we call a micro hydro scheme. So all that means is it's a small, that's what micro means, small, water, hydro, water, electricity, um, hydroelectric, a micro hydro scheme. So like a miniature version of a big dam or, or dam and reservoir and hydroelectric plant that you might see in a high income country. Now, the reason they've done this here is simple. Let's draw a big rain cloud over here, lots of rain. Um, this area of Peru has very high, high rainfall. You can write that in the cloud. High rainfall. Now, because it has high rainfall and steep slopes, it makes it the perfect area to create this micro hydro scheme. So if we just write steep slopes on there. So th those are the ingredients, if you like. That's where they thought this is perfect. It's not particularly sunny, so it's not a great spot for solar, um, and it's working with what you have. So what they have, if we carry this line on, is a river, okay, and it's a fast flowing river, and we can write that in it, so fast flowing, they don't just have one, they have multiple fast flowing rivers, okay, so they're working with the natural environment, and what they've done is they've, um, so this river kind of carries on up here a little bit. There we go. They've built a side channel, okay, like this. So the, this channel redirects some of the water this way, away from the main river, okay, it comes out of the main river into this side channel, and then it finds itself in a big tank. So you can write tank there, and that's, you know, it's quite a large tank and it's all propped up and what have you and then there's a pipeline that comes off the tank turns a slight corner into this um what's well it's, it's essentially like a powerhouse um has a turbine in it that spins so if we just draw that's sort of the biggest part of the build and then out of that it is sort of a waste um, pipe that goes kind of back into the river. So this water is moving constantly um, but they can also kind of store it and use it you know say if it's uh, not so rainy they can store water and they can use it as well. But the water comes down the channel into this tank which is then released down into this that's right this pipeline okay into the powerhouse let's put an arrow to that so it's a power house. This is where the electricity is made, okay? Maybe we just draw a lightning bolt on there. Um, with a turbine, remember a turbine is just like a wind turbine, has something that spins, it's blades, it's rotation, it's spinning. So it's a powerhouse with a turbine and a generator. Remember a generator is something that's used to kind of store and convert the electricity. Okay, so the water goes along the channel into the tank, it's then released down this pipeline into the powerhouse and then the water goes back into the river and flows downstream like this. So it's not affecting the river at all, it's just borrowing some of the water for a little while. Um, it's affordable, it's accessible and it's owned by the local people. Now Chamba Montero was somewhere that they just didn't have much at all. They had no electricity at all. So everybody was using kerosene lamps and candles. Um, they were really st very much stuck in the dark ages. 
and it has transformed their lives. So let's look at some of the positives over here. Okay, um, I think the biggest one is it provides electricity uh, to residents because they're, they're quite um, out on their own, they're quite isolated. Uh, they're not near other towns or cities, so this is just perfect. It provides the perfect amount of electricity for them uh, without needing to move electricity around. So um, it provides lo electricity to locals for only $2 per day. So it's cheap electricity. Um, the reason it's cheap is because it was funded by Japan and, uh, and a charity, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, another thing, regulating the water, so taking some of the water out, has actually reduced flooding. And that's been a major positive. So regulating water has reduced the risk of flooding. Just amazing. Um, and then it has really transformed their lives. So if you just draw a stick person, put a smile on because they're super happy. <laughs> um, okay, so because of this situation, they have now got uh, new businesses. So things like radio stations have popped up and new shops and things because they have refrigeration now. Refrigeration. There we go. So they can like store medicines. Oh, they can store milk. They can store, they've got freezers. They've got ev all kinds of um, electricity type appliances now. But before this, they didn't even have fridges. Uh, they now have the internet. So they are now connected to the rest of the world. Their children, they were educated before, but their education has hugely improved because they now have access to computers. Um, so they are just totally different people. The other thing, they, I know it seems simple, but they have streetlights. And they can do things after dark. Let's give them some hair. You know, they, life doesn't stop at sunset anymore. So really big, amazing positives because of this little scheme. So how was it funded? So it cost... US dollars, it cost $51,000, okay? Now that was partly funded by Japan. Um, very often high-income countries will support low-income countries or areas with projects like this. Um, it was partly funded by Practical Action, which is a um, charity, Practical Action charity. So they use some of their funds. And then this is the interesting bit. It was also funded by the families themselves. So they spent $750 uh, per family, which was done on credit, so they pay it back, um, to own it uh, per family. So $750 per family on credit. And that means that it's not owned by Japan, it's not owned by Practical Action, it's owned by the local community and the local community work on it. The local community release the water, service the uh, generator, work on the turbines. I like the fact that it's completely, they're completely independent now. And this model, this micro hydro scheme model, could be used in other places. So there you go, hope that's helpful.